and welcome to Retail Fueling 101. My name is Ed Cameron, and I'm the Director of Marketing and Global Product Strategy for OPW Retail Fueling. And today we're going to talk about, about our underground storage tank again and, and think about a couple things that happen. So if we have fuel in our tank and if we add fuel, if we're filling that tank, there's an area of our tank. Actually, I'll, I'll switch to another graphic here. Um, it's a little bit easier to see on this, uh, this two-dimensional drawing. But you can see we have our underground storage tank and part of that tank is, is liquid or, or fuel. And everything above that is the empty space. And again, that gas has been evaporating or vaporizing. So what we have in that empty space above is gasoline vapor. Uh, it's actually a name for that empty space between the, uh, the liquid level and the top of the tank. It's what we're referred to as the ullage of the tank, or really what, you know, how much capacity is left in that tank. So what happens is the ullage of our tank is comprised of these gasoline vapors. So our pressure vacuum vent is doing a good job of kind of keeping those vapors in there unless the tank reaches a, a point where it needs to go back to equilibrium and the, and the pressure vacuum vent opens, but primarily those vapors just sit there. So if you think about this, as a drop happens, that liquid level is rising up, right? So those gasoline vapors are being displaced. They have to go somewhere. Um, if, if we kept the whole system tight, you know, again, we'd have a, the tank would, would crack or we'd build up too much pressure in the system. So those gasoline vapors have to go somewhere. So again, going back to the early days of gas stations, really what would happen when a driver would, would fill the tank up, all those vapors that were in the ullage of the tank would basically just travel through the vent pipe and go right out the vent stack. So as he filled up, all those vapors just, you know, coming out at a, at a pretty high rate into the atmosphere and uh, again kind of goes back to the the early a late 70s um, early 80s as the EPA is trying to get a get a handle on pollution and they started looking around saying okay wow we got a lot of you know VOCs that are coming from these fuel stations and really every time uh, a, a tank is filled you know it's it's emitting all these hydrocarbon vapors so the industry said okay or well, the EPA told the industry, all right, petroleum industry, you got to figure out a way of controlling this. So what we came up with is what's referred to as stage one or phase one vapor recovery. So now what happens is as fuel is dropped into the tank, before the driver makes that drop, he has another hose on his truck. Um, it's referred to as a vapor recovery hose. Uh, it's usually orange. They try and, try and um, separate the two. And usually a bit smaller diameter, a vapor recovery hose is usually three inch. So what he does now is he'll hook up that vapor recovery hose also to his tanker truck and his drop hose or his fill hose. And because if you think about what happens, the underground storage tank is filling up with liquid and it's displacing vapors. Well, really the opposite is happening in that tanker truck. You have a tanker truck where liquid level is now dropping, so you, now, you need to replace the liquid with, with air or, or, or gasoline vapors in our case. So now he hooks up two hoses, the drop hose and the vapor recovery hose. So what happens is as the fuel level rises, the vapor now, instead of going out our vent stack, comes up through our vapor recovery hose and actually goes back into the tank. So he's collecting those vapors back in the tank. So everything kind of stays in balance. We prevent the vapors from getting in the air. And it actually turns out to be a good thing because the vapors go back in the tanker truck. And what they do is the tanker truck will take those vapors back to the terminal and they have a pretty cool way of, of turning those things back to gasoline. Uh, they, uh, they chill it and compress it and condense it. And they're actually able to take that vapor and turn it back into some liquid so they can resell it at the terminal. Um, so better than going up and causing pollution, it's actually turned back into a, into a liquid fill. So this whole process of collecting vapors from the tank during a drop is what we call stage one vapor recovery. Um, so what I'm showing here is what we refer to as a, as a two point fill. Um, one point we're dropping and the second point, we're actually collecting the vapor, so we have two different hoses. Uh, in some cases, um, especially in, in older tanks, where they, when we started going over to or requiring stage one vapor recovery, they may not have had enough openings on their tank to have a two point. So they call or they will use what's called a single point fill. And the way that works is there's one riser pipe um, and one, one hose but the hose is actually what we call coaxial. Coaxial meaning kind of a hose within a hose. So on a single point, the fuel drops down the center 
and the vapors come up on the outside of the um, of our, our, our riser or our drop tube and then they go back through the hose again the hose has um, in the center is fuel and the outside is vapor so they collect them through there through a coaxial uh, drop tube uh, actually, I actually have a graphic here that shows what that coaxial drop tube looks like you'll see the two hoses that kind of come up from there um, but primarily you see especially on new construction everything they try and do is uh, is two point you see here this is actually what's referred to as a multi-port where we actually have our fill and our vapor recovery is in one large chamber under one large lid and our, our two our two spill buckets um, are side by side here under this one chamber so we got our fill and our vapor in one and uh, this is referred to as a multi-port. Uh, these are actually pretty common in California, uh, New York City, you'll see a lot of, of states utilize these and uh, the reason they do these is because you actually can have access to the top of this tank and your risers because you have this big chamber here so that's what's referred to as a multi-port uh, but on the other stations what you'll see um, or the other type of fueling sites is this would be a little bit more typical. Uh, this would be our two point where we have a spill bucket here and our vapor recovery spill bucket here and the driver would hook up. Now at, at, the, um, at, the, at the stage one vapor recovery point, uh, that can either be a spill container or many times it's just a, um, a, a manhole uh, to kind of house that uh, vapor recovery adapter. Because you think about it, we're not filling or dropping product in there, so if everything goes the way it's supposed to, you shouldn't have any fuel coming out of that riser pipe where our, our vapor and our vent pipe is. So that could also be just a standard manhole. So um, stage one vapor recovery is a way for us to collect the vapors and keep them from going out into the tank or into the atmosphere. And that's how we get our product from the tanker truck down into our tank to be used and sold somewhere else down the line.